Hey guys, Detective Fail here, or Dia for short. Hope you're doing well. Back with another review, this time on Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Future Redeemed. Let's get started. If Tetsuya Takahashi wanted to end Future Redeemed in a way to satisfy fans in the beyond after Xenoblade Chronicle 3's incredible ending, well spark my dude, you exceeded my expectations and then some. As a fan of the Xeno games since the time of Xeno Gears, Future Redeemed encompasses all the necessary callbacks, references, easter eggs, and precious moments we were waiting for. I was captivated by the countless affinity scenes, the moments you can see out in the world without any level or party member requirements. That struck me the most with the experience of all the past Xenoblade Chronicles games. And while I wish there were more to the point of fan service, I understand why Monolith Soft didn't do so. It's a delicate thread to balance for the fans to an extent they will be satisfied without over gorging too much. And yet I am astounded at how great these scenes I saw within the expansion that evoked a sense of satisfaction. Some were bittersweet, some heartwarming, and some I couldn't help but be amused at the sheer cheekiness. It is Xenoblade through and through, so you will experience a wide range in the emotional spectrum. Gameplay didn't change much. Like in Torna, the Xenoblade 3 combat system makes a welcome return here with the addition of unity combos and unity setups to mix things up a bit. Familiar and a mix of unfamiliar systems in place to capture player interest and more into the gameplay focus of Xenoblade. I thought the systems were decent, didn't need to go too complex or too simple. There is plenty of customization here as well, and I felt the tutorials do a good job explaining the old and new mechanics. Music as expected of Monolith Soft's composer team hits all the right notes. Players will recognize familiar tracks and new tracks. I greatly appreciate the interconnected zones here. Then in Torna, due to the implementation of an increase in platforming and secrets. It's not as deep as the intricate layers you see in Dark Souls, but zones flow seamlessly into other regions you will traverse, and I found them to be a good length to explore and fight in. It's not super large to the extent you need to spend X amount of hours to reach one end of a zone into another zone. There is careful thought and precision by Monolith to make beautiful environments and secrets worth finding feel natural as past Xenoblade games were designed, and the expansion flourishes as a result. You do have new field mechanics to play around with, to reach new areas like repairing broken ladders and other methods which I won't say since it's better to experience that in game. But suffice it to say, I had fun exploring once again in Future Redeemed, just like the past entries including X. One last bit of praise, it is an absolute pleasure once again to see two familiar characters and there are so many moments here I have wished so hard in the past to witness and it has come to fruition now in Future Redeemed. So their presence creates a new dynamic I don't often see in JRPGs or DLC expansions and it's worth it here. Moving on. While I consider the expansion excellent, there were some things that did tickle my mixed feelings. I don't consider it a positive or a negative, but for the sake of transparency, I'm noting the qualities to let readers know ahead of time. Certain unlocks for the characters you play are locked behind some side quests and through exploration, in secret areas and opening relic chests. These will unlock gem unlocks, accessories, affinity growth charts, and arts. Several can be easy to spot and therefore unlock for each character at your leisure, but a small to decent chuck can be tricky to spot. By the end game, I had mostly everyone's slots unlocked, with only a couple of my party members' features locked since I wasn't as thorough in exploring everything, despite the fact I had cleared 90% plus of every zone and completed I would say 95% of all side quests. So this mix of forcing the player to unlock their innate features for each character feels a bit forced to make my 
players explore. This is fine for me because I love to explore, except I also want to get the most out of my party members' abilities and features through natural based progression. Meaning, when a new chapter begins, release a third of my party's accessories, arts, gems, and affinity growth sharks lock status, and so on and so forth as I complete new chapters. I can understand why Monolith Soft tried to shake things up with this approach to encourage exploration, which is worth seeing. Except for me, I'm left shaking my head at the potential of my party could have had naturally instead of being forced to explore. Secondly, I am flabbergasted by an important scene that was not properly labeled on the map with a giant exclamation point or affinity scene after witnessing a story cutscene in chapter 4. Although I should say it is labeled correctly but not properly placed actually. At the time of making this review, the place where I was talking about has a hammer icon above the point of interest so it's kind of hard to see unless you zoom in real carefully. This was pointed out to me by a good friend of mine by the name of Telosuan so thank you for letting me know. The reason why I'm pointing this out in my review is because the scene is an important one that reveals massive lore context we needed from Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Without going into spoilers too much, visit someone's not going to say the name of the character's workshop after viewing the story cutscene on a mountain located at a high elevation in chapter 4. This will happen naturally, but players need to go back to the workshop to notice the scene. Hopefully this is a bug and the developers missed it, but as a Xeno lore dude, I'm shaking my head if people miss the scene. So please, don't forget about checking the workshop. Another point of mixed feelings would have been further time to flesh out two characters. Not going to say names since this is a non-spoiler review, but I consider two of the cast within the expansion somewhat needing extra development and cutscenes to shine. There are familiar cast members that kinda take out the spotlight from the two characters, and as a result they don't shine as much in my eyes. While understandable due to the other characters sheer presence, I think additional affinity scenes could have been used to delve deeper into the bonds of our party and create a cohesive party at hand, thereby allowing the cast to bond thoroughly and make the endgame stand out just a bit larger. Not a nitpick at the endgame chapters, since I consider it a fitting farewell to the trilogy, the expansion has the weight and reach of the first game. The grand presence of the second game and the lessons learned from Torna in creating side quests that are not needed to progress through the story by community levels expands on what we already know in the third game delving deep in the missing context and cues we so desperately needed and wished for and I would say the developers delivered so much. It is exactly what I needed from Takahashi and his team. The connection of the past and future is connected, all while capturing the wonderful magic that is unique in every Xeno game. With the great main cast and soulful music once again struck me deep in the heart, satisfying gameplay loop and worthwhile cutscenes every Xeno series fan needs to experience. It's been an incredible journey seeing how far they've come since the first Xenoblade game and from the time of Xenogears. My final score for Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Future Redeemed is a 9 out of 10. For any Xeno series fan, this expansion is easily a must play and for us longtime fans since Gears and Saga, one to not miss out on. Anyway, that's enough from me. Thank you guys for listening and watching, and take care. Oh, sorry. <sighs>